One of my followers sent me this post. The poster, the OP, has deleted this post. Thankfully, I was able to get this screenshot of the question. She says, has anyone else noticed that some women are only nice to women who don't threaten them? As in someone who won't say congratulations to someone who is better than them, but they'll say congratulations to someone who isn't deemed better than them. I think this is a good discussion post. I have seen posts um, in the Black Ladies subreddit where they're like, have you guys noticed that Black women are mean to other women? And, um, you know, it, it's always some kind of extra generalization that they do in these posts um, that are leveled at other women. And it, it really doesn't allow for the vast array or variety of women. There are all kinds of us. There are people who are more standoffish. There are people who you have to get to know. But basically, there are going to be a variety of people, and you kind of have to get in where you fit in where it comes to, you know, finding your type of people. Um, and you also have to tip, you know, Stop judging how others perceive you and thinking that they're just being mean or how do you know that they are threatened or not threatened? You know, you never really know. So all of this is perception. And no, I, I haven't noticed that there are some women that are just nice because they don't, I don't threaten them or other women don't threaten them. That's way too overly generalized. But I want to have this discussion. Y'all go ahead and weigh in. Um, like I said, this post was deleted and there are only a few um, comments on it. But I do think that this is worthy of discussion because I do believe that we as women can, um, we, we have to unpack that internalized misogyny. Many of us give negative traits to other women, um, especially if there is a man involved, especially if there's some kind of scarcity mindset. Um, and I think that, you know, as we unpack this internalized misogyny and, you know, patriarchy and decentering men, our com conversations, I think that we can start forming stronger communities of women, but y'all can weigh in on that part too. The tribe says, can't say I've noticed that at all. Usually when people are rude, they're just rude universally in my experience. The public um, domain kitten says, women raised in patriarchal cultures ingest misogyny and the effects can manifest in many ways. Perhaps this is one of them. Patriarchy relies on a scarcity mindset. Women are conditioned for, from birth to compete for the attention of men because they are raised to center men and often view other women as competition. She dropped the mic with that part right there. Until recent history, women were completely dependent on men for resources of any and all kinds, not just their way of life, but often for their very lives. Times have changed and they are changing more. Equity brings liberation, and the world is becoming a more inclusive place, whether some like it or not. However, I don't see this. Uh, I don't see this much of the behavior you speak of in my daily life or in my relationships with other women. I think as women grow, they realize that women are their biggest cheerleaders and allies, and form close relationships, mentorships, and deep bonds. Or maybe what you're noticing is women being civil to other women they just don't like. And that could very well be it too. We're not all going to be smiley and in your face. Like I said, even having that expectation is like unfair because we're all human and humans have different emotions based on different things or experiences. And you don't really know what a person is going through. Shit Show Boxer says, perhaps in high school, this is something that appeared to be happening, but I haven't noticed it much in adult life. And then Rena Wild says, yes, but men definitely do that too. Insecure people can react badly to confident ones. I've also read that insecure women are threatened by women they deem to have higher value by the patriarchy or confident women who have no interest in it. So I do want to know what you think about this. I thought that this was a good discussion point, especially with all of the other conversations that we're having on my um, platforms. So join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. I watch birth rate trends, and I'm on team Let the Birth Rate 
plummet to hell. That's where I am. But I saw this post in the infographic subreddit. It um, is titled women in every demographic group are much less likely than men to think the birth rate is too low. So men think the birth rate is too low. Women do not think the birth rate is too low. It just goes to show you where things are moving to. Now, this graphic is pretty small. Um, I'm going to show a bigger graphic in just a moment. So Lord Hogan says, any chance you can link the data cited in the bottom right? I'm curious about the sample size, duration, and distribution. And then Sufficient Greek posted the, the link saying that 3,000 U.S. adults were surveyed. And Undreamed Gore says that's way too few a number. And then Olympias the Molassian says not really. Statistically speaking, useful surveys start around 30 participants. And 1,000 is considered very strong. 3,000 is a needlessly high number, really. Did you know that? I didn't know that 3,000 was extra, um, but now we do. Well, according to Reddit. So I clicked the link that they provided, and here is the poll number. It was conducted um, in early August. It says, do you think that the number of children being born in the U.S. is, and they said very important, somewhat important. So this is where they get the polls, and they surveyed over 3,000 people. So they got up to 33, I'm sorry, 3,362 U.S. adults. And here is the article. Too many babies, too few. What Americans think about the birth rate. Americans are divided about whether you, the U.S. birth rate is too high or too low, but are more likely to say that there are too many children being born worldwide than that aren't enough. A new YouGov survey finds Around one quarter of Americans say that about the right number of children are being born in the U.S. and about the same share say that case worldwide. I'm sorry, that is the case worldwide. You got to love colorful infographics. So purple is too many children being born. The greenish color is the right amount of children are being born. The gray is not sure. And the red is not enough children. So um, for the survey in the United States, look at these numbers. They're pretty evenly spread at too many, about right, not sure, and 22%. But um, <clears throat> for the worldwide number, um, too many children are being born at 29% and not sure at 33%, but not enough is only 15%. All right, it says whether it's about the U.S. or the world, women, liberals, non-parents, and younger adults are relatively more likely to say too many children are being born, while men, conservatives, parents, and older adults are relatively more likely to say not enough are. Very interesting how that spread is. Political ideology in particular is powerfully associated with beliefs about the birth rate. Among Americans who identify as very liberal, 35% say too many children are being born and 9% say not enough are. Among those who identify as conservative, 15% say there are too many children and 43% say there aren't enough. Okay, so it says women, liberals, and younger adults are more likely to say the U.S. birth rates are too high rather than too low. So that's women, liberals, and younger adults. And we know um, that women are typically more liberal than men. So that is, you know, obviously going to have a lot of overlap there. So let's look at this, um, this graph. Okay, so let's look at the graph. Purple is too many children being born. Red is not enough. So for U.S. adults, it's pretty even, 23% to 22%. Cool. Let's keep it moving. Let's go down to gender. So with men, men think that not enough um, babies are being born at 30%, whereas over here, the women at 26% said that there's too many children being born. Now, if you look at the age distribution, as they get older, the number gets bigger with not enough going 17, 18, 24, 28. So the number is getting bigger for not enough um, people being born, not enough babies being born. Now you have got to just look at this graph for political ideology. They have it set up starting at very liberal all the way down to very conservative. And you can see how the graph is shifting. Um, very liberal is like way too many people. 
very conservative says way, I mean, not enough people at all. So if you just look at the graph, so that, that really just goes to show, especially since we know that men are trending more conservative, women are trending more liberal. We see where these things are splitting up. So this graphic is asking men and women specifically in the United States, do you think that? And this percentage is saying not enough children being born. And on every and on every line, on every one of these, men outweigh women saying there are not enough babies being born. So here is the split right here. 14% um, of women, 30% of men. So obviously that is a pretty wide gulf. Now this gulf down here with conservative men versus conservative women, 25% say, 25% of women say not enough children being born versus the men all the way over here at 47%. Now, very conservative men and women are, you know, a little bit more together, but this is where they are. Now, look at this age range right here with, um, with uh, people aged 18 to 29. Women are way over here at eight. Men are all the way over here at 26%. What 18 to 29 year old uh, man want really wants a baby? But then look at these, look at the old, the older folks, over 65%. These men are really worried about not enough babies being born. It is very, very interesting because men know, men really, really do know that babies anchor women. And as more women say, uh-uh, I'm not doing it, and the child-free movement takes off and all of that, men are knowing and understanding that they are not going to be able to control women. This graph, these graphics are very, very interesting to me and very telling. So I'm glad that this person posted this. I do want to know what you think about this, um, where you think things are going to head. Are you team, you know, we need more babies or are you team, let it plummet to hell? Weigh in, which team are you on? Team, let's have more babies or team, let it plummet to hell. Join the conversation. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. I'm so glad that the PP bro movement is on the decline, and I call them PP bros, but it's the passport bros. To even ask this question is kind of gross to me. He says, so how much is child support for foreign girls, like American guy and Mexican girlfriend? The fact that they refuse to call these people women is telling to me, like they really want, it, it, it's like girls is the only thing on their mind, not fully adult women, so that's number one. But to even ask this question about child support speaks volumes that they really just, you know, they just want to take advantage of these women. He says, no, I don't have a pregnancy scare with some girl. It's just pure curiosity. Is it the normal child support you'd pay in your state or is it less since their cost of living is lower? I believe if you get a girl pregnant, you should have some responsibility to support. This post isn't to argue that. I'm just curious how it is calculated. So just outright, just letting us know that marriage isn't really what they were looking for, how they were like, they're more traditional, they're marriage material. No, they, they finally just come clean with their intention. Um, he continues with, say the guy makes 250000 a year, how much would they be expected to give a girl in a small town in Mexico? 10% of income, that would be a lot for a girl in Mexico. No talking about how to actually support the kid or anything, being a parent or anything, nothing like that. But that is typical of these people. Anyways, let's look at some of these answers. Um, Paint Snifferoo says, oh, Paint Snifferoo says, it depends on what the government agency will determine. It's up to them. Just be aware, most dudes that have children outside of marriage tend to be a-holes to their children, to the children of unwanted. So the people who work for those agencies are always gung-ho on getting the most they can from the dad. I'm not saying everyone who has a child outside of wedlock is bad. It's just that it's just that those situations bring the worst out of guys who feel trapped or don't care for the responsibilities and the workers see that every day through the different cases. So Grace Sahara says, sorry, I need clarification. Are you asking how much support that you would pay if you, an American, had a child with a Mexican national and she lived in her home country of Mexico and you lived in America? And he says, yes, say I make 100 to 200K. What would a typical child support settlement be? 
once again, they're not concerned with family. Um, this person, um, Nico, says there's no child support for a non-citizen mother who's never been to America. And the OP says that's just not true anymore. They can file with the consulate um, and get the states to provide child support from the father. I, I don't know if these people know how terrible they sound. The fact that they're even having this conversation is tiresome to me, but Extra Chromosome says, Western men, shaking my head, hoopty schloopty then says, earn your own money, girlfriend. Um, Concept Logical says, keep crying. I ain't going to hear you, the money talking to me. So just to drive home the point that I believe that this movement is just about death. This person asks, is Colombia and Latin America still worth the hype? He says, now that the word is out and more and more sex pats are making headlines, and to me it seems like just about every other woman is a professional girlfriend, if you just set your Tinder passport to Cartagena or Bogota, you'll see what I mean. And yeah, we're talking about apps here. I prefer to match with and vibe with women virtually over a certain time before making the trip happen. Cold approach has always got me friend-zoned. Besides, I don't plan a trip longer than two to three weeks there, and it's more convenient to scout locations with dating apps, hold a virtual convo for a few days, and make plans, then show, just show up and cold approach randoms at the coffee shops and restaurants. Also, I'm looking for a serious long-term relationship, so I'm not a fan of party-type girls who sleep around much, so no, I'm not going to go to clubs to party with random people and stuff. So he's planning a trip for two to three weeks but also he wants a serious long-term relationship. I don't know how that works, but okay. He says, you might be confused how it's possible to make a long-term relationship happen if I'm only there a few weeks. Yes, I was confused about that. He says, well, I plan to visit her a few um, times a year and long-term plan to bring her over to the States after vetting in the process. It's been done before and plenty of success stories on strategies of how to. Of course, there is always a chance things don't work out, but if you have to be, I'm sorry, but you have to be pretty vigilant and take chances in life. Otherwise, you're stuck dating the unattractive ladies in the States. I'm glad that he has strategies, um, and I'm totally sure he would not get scammed because I'm totally sure that nobody would put on a front for two to three weeks to stomach this person and be able to stomach them when they visit a few times a year until he brings her back to the States. <laughs> Go ahead, man. MF Doom says, you expect to find a girlfriend and don't even live there full time? Let me guess, don't even speak Spanish. Size, you dudes have to be realistic and step back into reality, laughing my butt off. Your only option is to be a weekend warrior unless you are learning the language and plan on staying in the country for the first C of foreseeable future. Dating apps in Colombia are a big no-go. Dudes are getting scoped and losing their lives left and right to the point that the U.S. Embassy sent out a warning not to even use them. <laughs> I wouldn't warn them, but that's me because that's who I am. Um, Haywood says, yeah, a quality girl that wants a serious relationship generally what wants a partner that's there and speaks the same language. If doing the weekend warrior thing, just stick to the cheap thrills safely. Old Possession says, it was great about a decade or so ago, but the word got out a long time ago and it's been flooded with sex pat since. Medellin in particular, even before the pandemic, was getting tons and tons of men from all over the world looking for women. Most girls, girls, you encounter over there in places like Medellin or Bogota that speak even a bit of English have quite likely already been with a few foreigners before meeting you. Your best bet is to spend months at a time down there. I'm not sure if frequent short trips will work, but maybe you'll find a way to pull it off. Places like Cartagena and the main tourist areas of Medellin are obviously no-go zones for finding quality, long-term relationship-worthy women. The wild thing is they seem like they're irritated that women ha um, have bodies on them, considering the men are, like he said, flooded with sex pets. So the men are flooding down there. They're wanting to do the do with the women, what they call girls. Um, and then are they confused that these women are actually doing the do? I don't know. 
Anyways, the logic of these people is totally boy math. This is boy math. This, this whole post is nothing but boy math. These are the most logical leaders, people. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, let me know what you think. We got boy math. We got child support. Then we talking long-term relationships after two to three weeks of being down there. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.